Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be exploring a relatively interesting idea of placing planets around a star, and specifically we're going to be answering the question of how many planets can you actually place in the same orbit for it to stay stable for like, let's say a billion years. So can we actually place more than five Earths in the same orbit and expect a system that remains stable? Let's find out, and welcome to What The Math. Now, before we start experimenting, I actually wanted to mention uh, that I've actually talked about these concepts previously, and uh, today it's pretty well known in the astronomical community that there are the several points um, in the orbit of any object that are known as Lagrange points. There's one around right here, and this is actually like a 60 degree angle between Sun, Earth, and Sun and Lagrange point here. There's also another one on the other side, and this is where usually you detect what's known as uh, Trojan asteroids or Trojan objects. And as a matter of fact, Jupiter, our friend Jupiter right here, has like a lot of them here, a lot of them here, so does Saturn. Uh, they have a lot of Trojans orbiting in this region, and this is a really, really stable region of space. There's another stable Lagrange point on the other side, basically the opposite side of uh, the planet, and altogether, this would form three. Hypothetically, you could also place two more objects in a less stable Lagrange point right here and right here, but these are usually uh, not stable over periods of millions of years. They're only stable for about um, possibly anywhere from thousand to several thousand orbits. Now, can we place more? Well, there are many things you can do, and you can basically try to experiment by placing, let's say, um, binary system or even uh, systems where things orbit around each other, and place a few here, a few here, a few here, and then a few there. But overall, it kind of leaves us with what seems to be only four stable places. One, two, three, Four. And this is kind of like a common assumption in the astronomical community that you can, generally speaking, maybe only have four objects or four places in the orbit where things remain stable. But turns out that we may have been actually wrong. I'm actually going to try to create a new system and show you uh, first an unstable system. So we're going to create a system with sun in the middle, and we're just going to place a few random Earths in, in the same orbit, but I'm going to space them like just randomly all over the place. And it's going to have relatively similar orbit, but not exactly the same. And this is kind of like, I guess, a more natural formation. And we're going to see if uh, this stays stable. So there's like maybe 12 of them here. Uh, if I run this, and if you look at their orbits, you'll notice that... Uh, relatively quickly, the orbits start actually shifting around and they start switching around because these Earths now start acting on each other. They start gravitationally pulling each other, they start basically doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And some of them will kick each other out, some of them will basically collide, and some of them will collide with, with the Sun. Uh, there are certain stable formations, and usually we refer to them as resonances, and that's when um, for example, an object in closer orbit and an object in the farther orbit have a kind of a ratio of orbits, like for example, two to three. So for every two external orbits, there's three internal orbits. And in this case, usually you can form a stable conditions as well, but a resonance would not work with objects in the same orbit. And as you can see here, we completely failed miserably with pretty much everything now being all over the place. Now, it turns out, uh, according to a paper from back in, I believe it was 2010, uh, a paper uh, from Andrew Smith and uh, Jack uh, Lee Sauer, known as Orbital Stability of Systems um, of Closed Space Planets. They used uh, various simulations, not Universe Sandbox, unfortunately, because they didn't exist back then, but they used uh, several so-called N-body simulations, which is, um, Universe Sandbox is one of them, actually, to simulate a number of objects you could place in the same orbit. And they actually discovered something really, really cool. And I'm not going to spoil it just yet. I'm going to leave it until later. But we're essentially going to go back to... Um, well, we're going to place Earth first. I'm going to explain to you 
another concept here. There's a there's an area, or I guess volume in a sense, around Earth known as the Hill Sphere. This is essentially where Earth uh, creates a kind of a orbital dominance, and anything inside the Hill Sphere, like for example, our Moon. Where is our Moon? Our Moon is inside the Hill Sphere. Will actually acquire orbit around Earth. At some point, um, because there's also the Sun somewhere out there. Earth basically loses the heliosphere dominance, and then uh, it's actually now going to be uh, sun dominance. So this is inside the heliosphere, this is outside the heliosphere, inside, outside. Uh, for Earth, it's approximately like 1% of one astronomical unit, so about 1.5 million kilometers. And uh, this heliosphere um, distance is really important for establishing stability of objects in the same orbit. And so it turns out that apparently at a distance of about 12 times the um, heel sphere, or basically 12 times 0 0.01 astronomical units, in other words, 0.12 astronomical units, you can have another Earth um, as long as you basically place them in a position where they don't start influencing each other. So if I were to just place one single Earth, at the distance of about 1 AU, or just over 1 AU, it will very likely not stay stable. But if I were to spread them apart and basically have an equal amount of them, specifically an even number, all across the orbit, you could potentially create a really stable system. Now, they actually mentioned a number in, in their paper, and so I want to try this right now. What we're going to do is we're going to use this sun right here and create a system that they actually said worked for them. Now, they said you can place up to 42 objects in the same orbit, and they will stay stable pretty much for as long as you run the simulation. Let's try this. So, we're going to actually uh, automatically generate this by clicking on one of the rings here. And uh, I'm going to choose 42 bodies. They're all going to be mass of, uh, I guess, 42 Earths. And we're going to be using bodies instead of um, particles. And I think all we have to do now is just make sure that the distance is exactly one astronomical unit. Because that's where I think the distance is about just over 12 um, heel spheres, or actually even more than that. Because potentially you could even place a little bit more, but it might not be as stable. And I think that's all we need to select here. We can now just click on the button. Oh, and it also has to be or, uh, be ordered, not random, ge randomly generated. So now we just have to click on this, and there are our 42, I guess, moons in this case. They're not really Earths. Uh, and each of them is an individual object. Oh, wow, okay. Their mass is a little bit too big, actually. There are 25 masses of Jupiter. I think I clicked the wrong button there. I believe it was actually um, a button that said uh, total mass equals to this divided by 42. Well, actually, this is a pretty good initial simulation, and it technically should not work because the hill sphere for these objects is a lot higher. Now, notice how right away they kind of start doing the spiral, and that's because their mass is a little bit too large to, oh, well, this is beautiful, um, to sustain a, a stable uh, orbit. And now we get a lot of collisions. So that, that was a failure, but that's because I clicked the wrong button. They're actually colliding with each other right now. Let's try this again, but this time with uh, Earth masses, or I guess with just smaller planets. And if we do it one more time, we get our moons again, and this time, Okay, this time the mass is actually a lot less, but I was actually able to manually change all of their masses to one Earth. And so now we have 42 uh, Earth-like objects, or I guess almost Earth-like objects, in the same orbit as Earth would be. And we're going to run this once again, accelerate this, and see what happens. And it looks like we've created a super stable or a circular orbit. Well, technically, it's not super circular, but uh, this is still an ellipse. But nevertheless, look at that. It's absolutely stable. Now, just for fun, I actually ran this for a few hours while getting uh, a dinner outside. And uh, it was running really, really fast, actually. And when I came back home, nothing changed. It was still doing the same thing. 
Now, obviously, this is not a super scientific simulation, and it's uh, not exactly the best, um, most accurate representation of a solar system. But hypothetically, if you were to create um, a system, in this case, a solar system, and place relatively similar in mass objects, relatively evenly spaced out, making sure that it's approximately 12 um, or more hill spheres away, uh, each of them is 12 years, uh, hill spheres away uh, from each other, they would actually be in a really sort of stable environment. And this would last for, well, it seems to last for at least a billion years, according to the paper at least. They ran this um, in a supercomputer and they basically ran the simulation for a billion years and even after a billion years, things were still pretty much the same. Now that actually is a very interesting discovery. First of all, it creates an opportunity for us to discover a star system somewhere out there that might potentially have up to 42 uh, habitable planets in the same system. Now that, that would be pretty insane. We know TRAPPIST-1 has like, what, three, possibly four? Well, really it's three in the same sort of region of space that we call habitable zone. But finding 42 of them in the same region would be absolutely insane. On top of this, because of the distances involved here, so let me just remove this for a second, these planets are actually relatively close to each other. I mean, yeah, it's like uh, 15 million kilometers or so, but in terms of space distances, this is actually not far away. This suggests that, let's say one of these planets actually developed life here there's a high chance for what's known as panspermia, basically the spread of life across space through things like, for example, volcanic eruptions that might pick up a rock or two that have some sort of a virus and bacteria on it, and then ends up landing as an asteroid on another moon, or another planet in that case, and then this, this kind of spreads to other objects. Uh, the idea of panspermia has actually been suggested a long time ago, but we haven't really found any proof for it yet, but a system like this would have a tremendously high chance for this to happen. As a matter of fact, these uh, 42 objects would most likely actually be constantly sort of inter-exchanging um, various materials from each other's surfaces through volcanism and through eruptions and such. But anyway, that's really kind of beyond the topic of this video. The idea was to see how many planets we can place in the same orbit, and the answer is at least 42. But obviously we could actually increase this number quite a lot as a matter of fact, because we only looked at Earth uh, mass objects here. We could increase this to even more if this was a much, much smaller object. So if instead of Earth, and in this case, it's really, it looks like a moon, but it's mass of Earth, as you can see. If I were to actually take Mars, for example, and we'll take a look at this in the next video, you could actually place a lot more because Mars's hill sphere is much, much, much less than uh, the one from Earth, and on top of this, Mars is farther away, so it has more orbital space to put things in. So we're going to discover how many uh, of these objects you can actually place in Martian orbit in the next video. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the answer to the ultimate question is 42. Hopefully you know where this reference is from, and if not, well, maybe someone will explain in the comments below. The cool thing about it is that we could technically maybe push a few more in here and still have a stable system, but for it to be stable over billions of years, it really seems to be 42. So there's your answer, and hopefully now you learned something else from this video, and we'll subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and tomorrow we'll actually discuss how many more we can place in the orbit of Mars. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.